Hey folks, uh, so WWC 20 has just kicked off with a remarkable keynote, showing off loads of amazing things for iOS 14, macOS 11 now, watchOS 7, and of course tvOS 2. There's lots of amazing stuff happening, and uh, in this live stream, I kind of want to walk through some things I have discovered. Like I have not in any way mastered this stuff. I'm just figuring it out like you. I'm just throwing code at Xcode, trying stuff out, refining stuff, breaking stuff, fixing it again, and trying it out with a new iOS 14 APIs for Swift UI. Uh, and I want to walk through some of the things I've uh, figured out so far. And I'd love to hear feedback from you, things you've tried, things you are um, noodling around with, things you uh, want to learn more about. Let me know. I can try and find out for you. Uh, or I can show you the code here. And my goal very much is to show you as much code as I possibly can in one uh, space of time. Uh, so by all means, uh, you want to go ahead and use the YouTube chat area to ask questions. And I'll do my best uh, to answer them. Otherwise, I'm just going to walk through stuff until I get bored, which is be a while away yet. Uh, I'm on, by the way, if you're curious, I'm, I'm on Houston time right now, like central time somewhere. So it's like 9 p.m. in my head right now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and try and share my screen. Let's see if this is going to work with uh, me in the corner. Let's find out. Cool. So you can see me and I can see me. Cool. <laughs> Extra cool. Lots of me everywhere right now. Uh, so... Uh, I'm going to try and maybe move me down to the corner like that. How's that? Okay. So hopefully you can uh, see me, you can see the screen, and we can go ahead and try out some uh, some code. Uh, now, there is stacks of stuff that have changed in SwiftUI uh, for iOS 14. Uh, I'm going to walk through a handful of bits of it, things that really caught my attention, things like grids and lazy stacks and color pickers and so many more things. And um, if you have questions, by all means, uh, ask away. Oh, question already, forever from you, can you use if let? Yes, you now can use if let. Oh, big win. I think we have Doug Gregor to thank for that on the Swift team. I don't know. Uh, so um, thanks, Doug, or whoever it was who made if let work and switch case work as well. Super nice. Also, by the way, uh, in Swift 5.3, which is in Xcode um, 12, you get the chance to drop self from so many places, which is amazing for Swift UI code. Anyway, let's crack on with doing multi-line text because nowadays you actually have a real multi-line text control for doing uh, multi-line text. I press Command R to run my basic Hello World example to get started. Uh, I'm using my my magic keyboard for um, you know Apple's keyboard, and it's not my regular keyboard, so bear with me. This could be a bit a bit of fun as I try and figure out how to get the keyboard to work properly. Uh, it's going to launch up hopefully here, the iPhone 11 Pro Max simulator. Let's find out. In the meantime, yes, if let switch case does work brilliantly. Okay, let's hello world, boom. Let's um, make that into a text view, which is, this is old stuff. Text fields are old stuff. We used to say things like um, at state, uh, at state, private var text equals hello world. And now rather than doing text here, we'll do text field with that pr prompt, the placeholder, and text would be dot text. Boom, and we'd now get uh, an editable text field, just like in iOS 12, that is old school stuff. But now in iOS, uh, sorry, iOS 13, now in iOS 14, there's a new control we can use, which is a text editor, which looks very, very similar. We just say text editor, like that. There is no uh, placeholder for that, so just do text editor, text dollar text, and you will get a multi-line text editor right now. You're seeing YouTube Studio. Wrong screen, Paul, no! Check it out, uh, how do I share the right screen? Desktop plus me, desktop plus me. You're seeing the wrong thing. I see why, Xcode. There we go. Uh, let's just do the whole screen. There we go. That's much better. Much better. You can see my screen now, right? <laughs> uh, let's make uh, add, add some padding around that so we can see what we're doing more easily. Padding. That's what the chat window's for, folks. That's why it's interactive. You've got to prompt me and kick me and nudge me. Uh, I have Hello World now. I can go ahead and type freely. And boom, you get multi-line text as you would expect. Awesome. Uh, now you can actually, if you want to, you can add a line limit if you want to. You can do uh, dot line limit if you really want to. And say, I want no more than five lines if you want to. And that actually works. That was quite hard to do in the UI kit. And it actually works out of the box in uh, Swift UI, which is great. Um, it is just a regular text, by the way. So you can customize it all you want to. You can say things like, I want a foreground color of uh, oh, blue. That's a, that's a new uh, co-commission for you. It gives you sensible defaults out of the box. Uh, and now you get hello world and your text completely out, out, out of color in blue. 
Um, and you can customize it. You can say, actually, I want to use the dot font dot, ooh, what should we use? Headline. A bit chunkier. Oh, Prod Kashkari, anything new with property wrappers? Yes, lots of property wrappers have changed. There are new property wrappers. Let me know in the chat window if you want to see some cool new property wrappers because there's new property wrappers. It's cool. Anyway, a larger font. That's headline. Let's try a uh, title. Boom. And we'll get a nice large. There we go. Even bigger. It's customizable. Do you like? I would say, by the way, there's, there's a nice new way of doing custom fonts. You can actually say I want a custom font that scales relative to something else. This one down here. So I want to have, I don't know, uh, Georgia uh, size of 24 by default, but relative to large title, for example. So I get some flexibility with it to adapt to um, dynamic type, which is really, really nice. So now I'll get my Georgia font, but when I use these controls down here, I can say make the font bigger or smaller, and it will respect that for a change, which is really, really nice. So yes. Uh, why not using previews? Because it's lightning fast. Because <laughs> you can press command, and it runs straight away. Um, so it's no need to do previews. Uh, how much coffee? Zero coffee today so far. I'm doing very well on coffee front. Anyway, that is a uh, tech editor. Really, really simple thing to do. Uh, Let's move on. Let's look at progress views, because you can do um, two types now. You can do the bar style, where it ticks along with colors, or you can do the in indeterminate stuff, a sort of activity indicator spinning wheel thing. Uh, and the spinning one's brilliant. You just say, I want progress view. Progress view. And it'll say, great, what's your title? And I'll say, it is uh, loading. Badoom, that's it. And that's you get a spinning indicator out of the box. Um, I'm not sure what will appear on the stream, mind you. There it is, it's about visible in the stream, spinning around happily. Um, it's really easy to do those things nowadays, which is great. Um, can I put this in this side by side? I could try, but I'd have to sort of uh, lose some of this chat window. Uh, Brian Olive asked, do you have to have Big Sur? No, you do not have to have Big Sur. It works great inside Catalina. Uh, anyway, so that is there, uh, a spinning activity indicator. If you wanted to have one that's attached to some value going across, uh, like like Bright Future Ask, is it not a progress bar? Yes, it can be. It's both. So we could say I want to have private var download amount here, download amount, be equal to 0, 0.0 by default. And then, hey, it's Miguel. How you doing? Uh, and then rather than having just like loading, we could say I want to have uh, a value of the current value download amount, and then a total value of 100. And it basically means go between 0 and 100. And it's much nicer than the old 0 to 1 at the old UI progress view. Um, so you can customize that very easily. And of course, you could say, now I want to have a VStack. Uh, this Apple keyboard, a eh? VStack. Uh, progress view, and have a button. Uh, move along, please, with the action of self, not even self, duh. Download amount. I'm still writing Swift 5.2, it's terrible. Plus equals to 0 0.1. Uh, you can customize that with a button click. Uh, it is angry for me, so I missed off a closing brace just here. Uh, Badoom, there we go. And now I can click along my little bar. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> it's adding tiny amounts to it. I'm going to make many of these things. Ugh. I might make that do perhaps 5 instead of 0 0.1. Otherwise, you'll be here for a very, very long time. Let's try again. Move along. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Beautiful. So that's the new progress view. It's super simple to do. Indeterminate and determinate. Really, really easily. Awesome. Next up, you can do lazy stacks now. You can control the way you have stacks loading or not, which is great because in the old code, we had a stack here uh, with some views inside. If I had like four each, uh, zero through uh, 100, id.self, I in. If I had text uh, row I, then it would load all words up front, which is, you know, maybe what you want, probably not what you want, particularly if you have a stack, uh, a scroll view. So if I had a scroll view around this thing here, it would be making all those things up front, even though only a fraction are visible. Ah, so um, Miguel, no, self is no longer needed. It's amazing. Uh, that's one of the major changes inside Swift 5.3. If you go to the amazing website, what's new in Swift.com, uh, you will see uh, multiple thread enclosures, blah, 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 synthesized conformances, self no longer required, SEO 269. Mwah. Basically, anywhere where it knows self isn't required, cannot be needed. There's no chance of a, a, a retain cycle when you're in a struct, it isn't possible. So it just gets rid of the self requirement entirely. It's absolutely lovely. 
Anyway, so that's nice. So we can have this thing now. We have uh, lots of our, our rows being created with a regular V stack. And if I had more of these things, say, you know, a thousand of them, it's going to make them all up front, which is a lot of work. We don't want that necessarily because it's going to waste a lot of time. Making all these rows up front, very, very bad. Hey, it's Harlan. It's all, all the cruising here today. I love it. Keep me going, lads. <laughs> um, it's making it all work up front, which is not necessarily efficient. Um, and you can see this in action. You could say something like, uh, I want to have a struct called sample row, which conforms to the view protocol and has an ID integer. ID integer even, int, there we go. And var body sum view, and I'll just do text again, was it row backslash dot ID, backslash ID. If we had a custom initializer in here for our struct init ID int, I'll do self dot ID is ID and print loading row ID. So I've made this custom sample row. It wraps our basic text text row right now with a custom row. Uh, and it's helpful because when it's being made, you will see it being made. It'll tell you I'm making row one, two, three, four, five, a thousand and so forth. And we can use that inside our for each down here. We could say for each zero to a thousand, uh, comma, uh, content, content is sample row dot in it make sample rows for every one of these things. And I'm still using a regular VStack here. So when I run this code back, we're gonna see a thousand rows being made, or a thousand and one rows being made. Boom, up front. And it always was doing that, right? That hasn't changed. It's meant go ahead and make a thousand and one rows as soon as the app launches, which is not a good idea, particularly if they have content inside that's not just plain old text. If you had to have images or whatever, yeah, not so, not so good. Um, fortunately, now we can say, actually, I want to have a lazy VStack here. Uh, lazy vstack, add the word lazy in front, super easy, and press command R again, and look at the difference in the output. It's now loaded rows one through, uh, zero through 41. So only the ones that can actually see down to the bottom of the screen. As I scroll down further, you see it below there, it's popping through, it loads them all dynamically, which is really, really nice. Much better way of working. What I would say is when you get to the bottom, it'll load all the rows, and I go back again, nothing else is being printed out. It makes the structs once and keeps them around. Now, my understanding is it'll release the underlying UI views or NS views to uh, free up the RAM. So you're not keeping around huge pictures or whatever, but the actual underlying structs will be kept around once they've been created, which makes sense. Um, another thing, which I don't think they mentioned on the stage, is a bit of a surprise this one. Um, you gotta look really carefully for this. If I go back to a regular uh, V stack, whoops, regular V stack, again, uh, and scroll around, you might notice on the, the scroll bar is right next to the rows. It's over here, right next to the rows. So it takes up only the amount of space required to fill that thing. If I click in the outside space here, nothing happens. I can't scroll around here. Um, whereas if I go to a new lazy V stack and try again, you're gonna see the whole thing become scrollable. So scroll bar now appears on the right hand side here like that. I can grab anywhere and pull it around. So the difference is a regular VStack will take up just enough space for its content. It knows how big it's gonna be. A lazy VStack presumably has no idea how it's gonna be. So it becomes a preferred width of infinity or height infinity in the HTACs. So it'll fill out all the space it can. So it becomes flexible. And that's why it scrolls on the right hand side with a lazy VStack. Whew, okay. That is progress views. That is VStacks and lazy VStacks and something else too. Progress, ah, we forget it was. Oh, text editor, I remember already, right, okay. Next up, maps. You can do maps now. This is one of the annoyances now. Of course, MapKit has maps and um, SpriteKit has sprites and so forth, and you can use them in SwiftUI now, but their documentation is scattered around elsewhere, so you don't kind of dig around to try and find where it is. I've been doing digging on your behalf. Hooray. Oh, Adrian wants property wrappers. Folks, if you want property wrappers, you gotta type property wrappers into the chat window now. You've got 10 seconds, otherwise I'm gonna do maps. I like maps. Maps are good. Oh, Adrian wants maps now. Make your mind up, Adrian. <laughs> you can choose. Folks, this is your stream. I'll do any part of iOS 14 you like. Let's noodle around. It's great fun. Go ahead and vote in the chat window if you want property wrappers or maps. MPAs is not an option, clickbait king. <laughs> All right, it's like, sprite kit? No, <laughs> it was maps or property wrappers. All right, maps and property wrappers. Yeah, we'll do both. Don't worry, I'm not going anywhere. It's only 20, uh, 10 past nine here for me. All right, let's do maps. Maps, surprisingly simple. Um, although I haven't quite cracked all of them yet. Um, you can go ahead and say, uh, first obviously import map kit, that's where it comes from. Uh, import map kit, boom. 
Um, you have to tell SwiftUI what to draw for the screen. And this is not just position, a center, but also the, the size to draw, the span of the map to draw. So inside here, we could say, I want to have a private VAR region. How much of the screen uh, is, the, is the map, and how much map being drawn, and where it's being drawn, a coordinate for the thing. And this is a particular type called MK, oops, M equals MK coordinate region, one of these things here. Uh, and this thing combines lat long and also oops, under the chat window, I can't quite see the code completion, <laughs> combines lat long, um, but also a uh, span. So let us try that initializer there. Put the chat window back and I can see. Uh, maps with property wrappers. Yeah, that'd be a nice idea. Um, so now we can say, give me a, a center. I'm going to do a CL location coordinate 2D. Takes a latitude longitude. Um, does anyone know any good lat longs off the top of their head? Um, if not, I will just Google one. Uh, London Wiki. Yes. Let's get a good latitude longitude. Boom. Okay, there is the latitude longitude for London. Uh, I say good, but it have to do. <laughs> uh, that's latitude, and let's paste that into longitude. Boom. Okay, so that is where we want the, the center of the map to be. The next one is a span. Uh, Yo Joe asks for WebKit. I'm afraid WebKit's not in SwiftUI still and doesn't appear to be landing in this release. Perhaps iOS 15. A coordinate span is an MK coordinate span. And this thing takes a lat delta and long delta, how much of the screen should be shown. So as you pinch in zoom, it'll um, draw it in a different size and so forth. Um, so I'm gonna do uh, 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. So degrees that is specified in, so a tiny bit of space. That is the region we want to show on the map. And once you've done that, it becomes trivial. Really, really easy. Because there's a map initializer, map, it's just called map, love it, <laughs> with a coordinate region. Boom, and you just say, uh, it's a binding, you say dollar $region. That's the region I want to show. I'm using the binding here, dollar $form, because as you're moving around the map, I want that center to update. As you pinch and zoom, I want the span to update, and similar. Casper, uh, why is it not 3 a.m. for you, Paul? Are you not in the UK? It is 3 a.m. for my family sing, sleeping just outside the door. I have moved my brain to Houston time um, because obviously WBC is happening. So being in the UK is not a good time zone. Anyway, uh, I can now pinch and zoom around. It's a regular uh, map, which is great. Look at that. Beautiful. So that's maps. Really easy. Next up, colors. You can do color pickers now. This has been a request for developers for as long as I can possibly remember. Uh, this and remote image views, and sadly, uh, one out of two ain't bad. Um, we get remote image views now. We can uh, we get colors now. We don't get remote image views. We get colors now. We can do color pickers using a built-in system color dropper thing, which is very, very nice. Um, it, I, I'm not sure it's fully refined yet, um, but it is very nice. And actually, if you listen to Josh at the uh, State of the Union, he said something fascinating, which was that the UI kit color picker was built using the Swift UI color picker. So it uses the color picker from SwiftUI. Brilliant. That's a lovely little nugget of information, isn't it? Anyway, color pickers. You can now say, I want to have a uh, color be equal to color.white, for example. Uh, color.white. And then here, you use color picker. Color picker, like that. And it wants a title and a selection. And that's it. I mean, it really made it brilliantly simple. Well done. Uh, pick a color. And by default, you will get uh, opacity support. Uh, you can, if you want to, disable that down to you. Uh, so I'll just do dollar color, color. And then uh, map kit still uses UI kit, right? I don't know. I'm using map kit. Um, I have no idea we'll actually use it underneath. Anyway, that's one huge color picker. I'll just press on it and you get the color picker UI. We can sort of select the colors, change the opacity. Uh, you can go to a spectrum mode and Click around if you want to. Uh, and the sliders, red, green, and blue sliders. And it even has display P3. Lovely, look at that. So it's a very flexible uh, color picker. There's even this little dropper icon up here. So you can say, I want to find you know this exact thing, that one, for example. Um, so for a, for a first stab at a uh, color picker, that's very impressive. Um, so yeah, well done Apple for doing that about time. 
Uh, add frame, width, height. Well, yes, of course, you can add a frame, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, right, so that's color pickers. What do you have next? Ooh, scroll views. You can do scroll views now, so they scroll to a location. I mean, like, uh, waiting for that for quite a while. Um, this is always an annoying thing because you want to be able to say, hey, um, you know, move down 50 points or move down to the show this thing or whatever. And now it works. It works brilliantly. Um, so we can do that very quickly now. We could say, um, what about file browser? I don't know, what about file browser? Um, yes, it's not backwards compatible to iOS uh, 13. This is all iOS 14 stuff. They've made no um, wrapping library to go back uh, for that. Uh, Oscar Alvarez, is there some video in SwiftUI? Yes, there is. There's a video in SwiftUI. Of course there is. You can now say in iOS 14, you can say um, import AV kit and use a new video player. Video player. And this thing just takes a player. Oh, actually, it takes a, an overlay if you want to be really cool, but it takes a player as well. Um, so the player is an AV player, which is very dull. Uh, and this wants a URL. So uh, I do have one I made earlier, um, but what was the URL? So is it um, something like bit.ly? Um, come on, you can do it by browser. bit.ly slash SWSwift. Yeah, that one. This is my what Star Wars can teach us about Swift. Don't play back. I don't want to have music on YouTube, please. Nope. No, 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 no. <laughs> um, that thing there was a uh, example video for doing streaming. Uh, it's a bit flaky <laughs> um, on the simulator, but it works great on devices. Use a real device for this, folks. Otherwise, it'll have a problem. Uh, so the URL, you'll just do uh, URL with a string of, oops, that. Turns out <laughs> uh, the, the short one should work too, which was something like, uh, bit.ly, go on, bit.ly slash SW Swift, something like that. I'm gonna cheekily force unwrap that. Uh, and that's it. You'll get a uh, video player running back. Like I said, it does not work well in the simulator. You wanna use an actual device for this. This is running iOS 14 already. Um, and it's actually very stable, by the way. It's very stable indeed. Anyway, side issue. Um, don't use submit for this, it won't work. Use the use the device, it'll work much better. And the best bit is you can actually provide an overlay. You can say I want to have some content here, um, text, hello world, and then give this, you know, font, large title. Uh, frame, actually not do frame, let's do padding. And then uh, background color dot black dot opacity 0.8. And that will be overlaid on top of the video player, which is great. So you can just have the, the video player with your custom watermark, whatever, on top. It works really, really nice, which is great. So that is video from Oscar Alvarez. A, a special diversion, which is fine. Where were we? Stacks, done. Lazy stuff, done. Progress view, done. Maps, done. Color picker, done. Oh, scrolling! We're gonna do scrolling! Scrolling's super cool in iOS 14, thanks to some changes in SwiftUI. They have really made this much, much better. So let's get rid of some junk here. Get rid of some junk here. Let's make a scroll view. Scroll view. Uh, now, it used to be the case, if you had in like um, a V stack here, and then had, oops, V stack even, come on, and had a button saying scroll to um, item, whatever. And you had a lot of items here, like, I don't know, I wanna have like text, uh, hello world, Many, many times like this, whatever, just stuff. And each one of these had, you know, some content behind it. And I'm going to do a height of uh, 200 each time. So it takes up a little bit of space on the screen. And we should end up with a fairly dull, broken, um, scrolling uh, Hello World thing. Is that enough? Yeah, it's a little bit more than that, but it's kind of enough. Let's do a couple more. Let's uh, add in some more here. Okay, that's much better. I might make the uh, VStack be a flexible width. Uh, dot max width, dot in, oops, frame max width in, wait, look at this, dot frame max width, dot infinity. Boom, let's do that. So now we get a scrolling thing. Okay, now I want to do, when I press uh, one of these buttons here, I want to scroll down to a particular item. I want to scroll down to, you know, uh, show me. Whatever. And that's now possible uh, in 
Swifty UI for iOS 14. You can say scroll to a particular thing and it's done using identifiers. You just say dot ID with some kind of identifiable thing, a hashable object. You could say, um, you know, hello or show me or, you know, ID five, it's down to you, anything that you like inside there and it will automatically scroll to that plane. All you gotta do is wrap the content inside a new type called a scroll view reader. And this works much like a uh, geometry reader does. It makes a new view where you can uh, calculate things inside there to do stuff. So let's move all this inside the scroll view reader. And hopefully it'll look the same, or almost the same. There we go. But now I can say inside my button action, I can use value. I can do value dot scroll to something. In my case, I'll use ID five, scroll to five. And it'll find the ID of the object inside the scroll view and scroll to that position, which is great. So if we start scroll view and boom, there is show me. Now you see it's done it lazily. It's gone to sort of just make it just about visible. So it came to the bottom of the screen there. Um, you can customize that if you want to. If you said, oh, actually I want to scroll so that it's in the center or the top, whatever you want to, that's possible. You just do scroll to five and give it an anchor. And I'll say anchor center or anchor top, wherever you want to. And it'll scroll to that location. Let's find out. Scroll to item, boom, smack in the center. That's it. So it's not so much we have to say, you know, scroll to 500. That isn't required anymore. We just say scroll so this thing is centered or this thing is in the top or near the top or whatever you want to. Uh, can you scroll to a tag? I think it's scroll to IDs. That's the point of it, um, Talon Turnbow. You give things IDs and scroll to those things, which is much nicer. Can you animate a scroll? Asks Jeremy. Good question. Let's find out. Let's find out. With animation, that. Let's find out. Let's find out. It's exciting. And the answer is yes, you can. Oh, and I want to play with it. Can you do like with animation? Um, what? Animation dot animation dot spring. Will that work? Will it overshoot slightly, slightly, slightly? Let's find out. No. <laughs> oh well. Uh, oh, well, you can do like presumably dot, dot dot animation dot linear with a duration of I don't know th three seconds. I'm just curious now. Let's noodle around. It's great fun for just noodling around. Scroll. No, it completely ignores your animation. <laughs> So if you did like, you know, repeat forever, um, that's just not what do anything by the looks of it. So it'll animate, but you can't control the animation. No, that's a great thing for radar. Not the repeat forever, that's a stupid idea, but the control on the animation over X seconds is a good thing for radar. So um, someone remind me to put that into radar. Yes, Harlan, thank you very much. <laughs> File feedback, get this thing fixed, um, because that'd be a lovely change to make. You know, don't just jump there with a linear animation. It's very dull. Go there with a easy and ease out. Maybe easy and ease out works perhaps. Easy and out. No exaggeration, you horrible thing. Maybe it'll get slightly nicer. Let's find out. Scroll to item. Nah, it's still very nice. Yes, radar. Remind me later to use radar because um, it's much nicer. Anyway, so that is uh, scrolling. You can now scroll to things in iOS 14, which is really, really nice. Who wants to see some grids or property wrappers or sprite kit or something else? I don't mind. It's your stream, folks. Your chance to let me know. I'm, I'm happy to noodle around and, and talk at my screen as much as you want. <laughs> In the meantime, I, I think I've earned some chocolate milk. This is not sponsored, but you know, this is the treat to myself when I'm working hard. Oh, you want to see grids by the looks of it? Okay, I like grids too. I, I've been working as you might imagine, non-stop since uh, 10 a.m. Pacific. So I am psyched right now. <laughs> <sighs> grid, right, you want to see grids, fine. Um, let's do grids. Um, with grids, I've, I've, I've cheated slightly here because I've actually imported some JSON already. This is the complete list of Swift UI, uh, SF symbols, names of pictures as JSON. And I've imported my all-time favorite uh, extension, bundle decodable, which makes it easy to decode JSON from an app bundle. And this basically you say, give me an array of strings from um, symbols.json and you get back, boom, everything. So it's a really easy way of doing JSON. Um, so I'm gonna use that to, um, to uh, do grids. All right, I really struggle with Apple keyboard. I can't find the keys very easily. All right, let's do that. So grids from Hawaii, sweet. 
Now I feel extra bad at being in the cold and wet UK. Uh, we'll do let symbols equals my custom extension bundle dot main dot decode, and this thing takes whatever you want to decode. So I'll say array of string dot self from the file symbols uh, dot json. And that will load all the symbol JSON thing into an array of strings, which is fine. But what SwiftUI wants to know is how should it render those things on the screen? What is your grid layout? What's your column layout? So we can say, I want to have a column layout, columns, be an array of grid items. And if I say I want a grid item here, uh, and for the sizing, I, we could say, let's use, uh, let's use uh, flexible for now. Just fill the space, stretch, stretch it out where you want to. Um, then we can say in our body, I want to have a scroll view. <clears throat> and inside there, a lazy V grid, a, a grid of stuff which will lazy load its content. It won't load them all up the front. And this will tell you how many columns you have. I'll say that's my columns array. And you can have some spacing if you want to. I'll leave it blank. And I'll say for each. Uh, each of my symbols, my string array, using id backslash dot self symbol in. I'm going to hide this preview pane because it's not using anything right now. Symbol in. For each one of these things, I want a vstack using, uh, if you want vstack, there we go, using image, I can't type in this keyboard, system name of symbol and the text of the symbol, like that. So show the picture and the text side by side for every picture in my array of stuff. I press Command R, and we'll get that by default. Not bad. Uh, we can customize that. We could say actually I want to have uh, two columns, both flexibly sized, so they take up as much space as you want, and then maybe wrap this inside a nice navigation view. It looks a bit nicer on a screen. Uh, indent one level. There we go and then add like a navigation bar title, SF symbols, browser, and just to make it look extra good, a little bit of spacing for our symbols. And add a comma here so it compiles cleanly, of course. Let's try that. Boom. Super simple um, SF symbols browser in like a handful of lines of code. Let's add a little bit of padding, perhaps the edges so it doesn't look quite so uh, constricted. Horizontal, boom. Even better, hopefully. Yeah, okay. It's really, really easy. Now, um, if you've done the UI kit code um, for UI collection view, you'll recognize this is effectively a improved flow layout. This is not compositional collection views. You can't do all the beautiful new orthogonal scrolling. Mm, Steve Green, I wanna hug him. Um, you can't do that. That is not in here, this is the old style collection view stuff, fractionally improved Swift UI, but it's still a flow layout. So maybe iOS 15, perhaps we will find out. That's grids. Um, oh, there's one nice thing which you might appreciate, uh, and it's not quite as good as the approach I've taken. <laughs> he says, with zero eagle whatsoever, um, which is you can now watch change events coming in for state. So you could say, for example, if I have um, at state private var email address equals paul at hackingwithswift.com. When you have stuff inside here to do um, text editing, you might say, I want a text field, uh, text field with the placeholder of enter your email address, a text being bound to dollar email address like that. Uh, is there pull to refresh in list views? No, there's not. I'm afraid not. So, uh, and a text field starter. This, of course, we want a nice style. Text field style of rounded border text field style. Now, what you can do um, is to say, I want to have an on change event. So you can say on change of the name or email address or whatever field you're working with. Give me the new value coming in and print out that the email address was changed to email address. Boom, like that. 
And now, as you are writing stuff, it will call that again, 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 telling you what it was changed to. So you can see down here, it's changing, changing all the time. So you can catch changes freely, which is really, really nice. Um, that's not the way I did it beforehand. Um, if you look at the source code for control room, which is a really nice uh, simulator control system, um, you can snag my on change from there. I think actually mine is a little bit better because I extend binding. Um, no, it won't be in there. There we go. So I actually extend binding directly. So you can you can have a binding actually with an on change inside it. So it calls your handler directly. So if I put it into the code, you'll see a difference straight away. If I have it in here, you can say uh, down here, when you have some binding inside here, you might say email address dot on change, do something. And it means you can uh, perform you know, whatever you want to in here. And it's a, a nicer way of working, I think, than having it catching all in modifiers. Oh, well, it's their, their choice, not mine. So I don't get to choose that either side. That's iOS 14 for you. Um, you hope you get attributed string Swift UI, says Romy Yano. Um, no, I think that's never going to happen. <laughs> um, I actually asked the team that in uh, the labs last year, and they're adamant that um, attributed strings weren't a good idea. So I'm afraid that's unlikely to happen. So, no. <laughs> uh, what else do we have? Oh, user defaults. This is one of the new uh, property wrappers. You have some folks who ask property wrappers flying by in the text. Um, you can do a, a new property wrapper called um, App Storage, which will read and write from user defaults smoothly. It's really, really nice. And I'll show it to you now. I want to have some chocolate milk. Hmm. Powered by chocolate milk. Forget, forget coffee. Overrated. If we had in here a button saying login. Boom. And we want to change some value here when we were working. We might say uh, at app storage, give this thing a key and say, I want to work with um, email address like that. Our email address is uh, paul at hackingwithswift.com. Um, and what we can do is that thing is bound to uh, user defaults. So I make any changes here to like, you know, self.email address equals. Um, anonymous at apple.com, it'll write that to user default automatically. So I could do something like um, a vstack and then uh, show the username as well as the login button, text of email address, boom. Let's make it slightly larger so you can see on the stream, uh, the title. So now we should hopefully see um, paul at hackingwithswift.com. Boom, when I press login, it'll become anonymous apple.com. So what it's doing is it's it's changing this thing here, the property, which will write it to user defaults and re-invokes the body property for our view to reflect the latest changes from user defaults. And even better, that thing, app storage, works even without the property wrapper doing the write. If you had had a regular, you know, elsewhere in your application, anywhere in the application, so like user defaults. Um, dot standard dot set uh, uh, Harlan <laughs> at haskins.com. I think you just come along, Harlan. Um, for key email address, that's not his real email address. Don't email him, please. <laughs> um, email address that would also work because um, it would detect the change anyway. It actually attaches an, uh, a, a, a KVO watcher to user defaults. So it'll detect the change and reload the view automatically, which is very, very nice. Um, super chat for my dogs. Thank you so much. It is, for the dogs, it is half past three in the morning. So they are very, very much asleep downstairs. And even though they might come for treats, um, I suspect they would be keen to sleep some more. Anyway, that's one of the new property wrappers in iOS 14 to Swift UI. App storage is really, really nice. And there are more. There's, there, there are um, scaled metric. Scaled metric is a way to uh, do UI font metrics, basically, wrapping it up nicely. If we had something like um, at scaled metric, var image size is a CG float equal to 100. And down here, I could say I want a uh, rectangle. 
I'll do a frame, frame, width of, come on, Hudson, you can type probably better than this, width of image size, uh, this keyboard, height of, height, height, height of image size, <laughs> image size, <laughs> image size, boom, it will use that to render the, the rectangle, but because it's using a scaled metric, it will understand as the user's font size changes to get larger or smaller, so it matches other things around it, which is kind of what you want inside um, a good modern app. It's not an awesome keyboard, it's this Apple keyboard. <laughs> I don't like it at all. My usual keyboard is actually, my laptop is just there out of shot because the fans come on so loud, so loud. So I've put it out of shot on a little cooling mat and it's in a corner in the wall of shame right now. And my regular keyboard's over here, but that is really clicky as you can hear. It's super clicky, it's a mechanical keyboard. And I wouldn't want to plague you with that sound. Anyway, rectangle is now that size and all being well, if I move this over here to hide, no, oh, I can't under the chat window. And over there, like that, it should scale according to my settings. Let's find out. Yeah, look at that. So the rectangle change size depending on the user's accessibility settings. Are they want extra large, small, whatever you want to, um, which is great because now you can say this should be a fixed size relative to the things around it. And if that text is drawn bigger, make the rectangle bigger or the picture bigger, whatever you want to bigger around it. So the whole thing scales uniformly, which is really, really nice. And in fact, you can even say, I believe um, this should be relative to a direct type size, like title, or whatever you want to. And it will scale relative to that font size growing or shrinking. So it will really match the things around it but absolutely flawlessly, which is nice. So that is one of the new, another one of the new property wrappers because that's that and app storage are really, really nice. <sighs> what else do we have? Is there a search bar yet? No, I have not seen a search bar yet. We are still missing search bars, which is a shame. And visual effect views. <sighs> Can't get them all. Oh, great question from Sehaj C. What's the difference between state object and observable object? That's another new property wrapper, state object. State object looks, um, so it, it, this is a mistake many folks have made, and I've made it too, it's completely normal to make. If you had a uh, class customer, has a name, string, and var uh, is annoyed, bool. Um, this thing might be an observable object, which is great. And that means you can watch it from your views, pass it around as environment objects, and whatever you want to. And if I just do default values here of um, Taylor and false, because she's lovely, she wouldn't be angry, would she? Um, you can pass around environments, you can pass them view to view to view. Um, that's what observable objects do. The problem is that SwiftUI's views can be recreated whenever they want to be. They can be destroyed and recreated, destroyed, recreated a thousand times, and we shouldn't care. And so if I had some code in here saying uh, at observable object uh, var customer equals customer, I'm saying create that customer inside the content view and let that content view manage it. So I'll put in here to make my code compile or at observed object, sorry. Yeah, I do that 10 times a day. Um, text of customer.name. We're saying create that object, a reference type, and owned make it owned by the content view. And that would work most of the time. And that's the frustrating thing. Most times it would just work. Sometimes, some random times where they'd reload the view some changes like that, going from screen to screen perhaps, it would be destroyed. They'd recreate content view, which would recreate the observable object behind the scenes. We don't want that. And so they've added a fix for this called state object. A new property wrapper specifically to solve this. When you want to create an external reference type like customer inside a Swift UI view, or window, or you know, wherever you want to do your stuff, uh, it will now own that safely, which is what we want. So it's a better way to do ownership of reference types. So you now want to use at state when you have local private state being created locally, and at state object when you have reference type data being created locally. You can then pass it off, of course you can, using environment or using um, you know, a, a properties to other views, but the thing that creates initially has to have at state object. And it's particularly important because um, in uh, SwiftUI now, there's no more app delegate. So there's no more app delegate class you can create things in safely and forget about them. Now it's all structs all the way down. It's turtles all the way down, right? And so 
we've got to have this new uh, state object type in there to track that information for us. So that's our third new property wrapper, right? There's, it's, it's, it's property wrappers galore right now, which is great. <sighs> when to use state object versus when to use observed object. You want to use state object if the view or the window, or the, whatever it is struct's making it, is the thing that's making it. So in my case, content view is making the customer's object. It is owning it. That is a source of truth right there. It owns it, pass it around. Everywhere else, that refers to that thing, we'll use at observable object. So the thing that creates it, at state object, everywhere else, observable object. Yes, Zach, at delegate, scene delegate, pop, pop, bang, bang, gone. All nice and cleaned up, which is a big improvement, quite frankly. <sighs> what else? Sprite kit, you know sprite kit? Sprite kit's fun. Um, does require a bit of hack sawing, as you'll see, um, but it's, it's fun, it works. It makes my MacBook get super fan hot, heavy, it, it does like spinning up the fan to sprite kit. <sighs> you don't understand difference still. Look, I can't be any simpler on this. The thing that makes the reference type has a property. The thing that says blah, blah, blah equals the type has to use at state object. Everything else will use at observable object. That's, that's it. That's all the rules. Ah, Mark Moykins, how do you change starting view? Right here, you just say, I don't want a content view. I want a uh, big mountain, big mountain studio view. Boom, like that. I haven't got one of those, sadly. Um, but you get the idea. That will make the, the new view for launch. It's much, much nicer. Uh, and it's brilliant because um, with core data, uh, there are some brilliant race conditions. If you want to get your persistent container, which is an asynchronous call to load it, you'd say load it and inject it to the environment. And iOS would correctly wait for this container to load before making it available to manage object context. Uh, and macOS wouldn't. macOS is just hard crash saying there is no object context every time. It was great. <laughs> so now it's all struct based. It's going to work way easier. Um, so yeah, it's much, much, much nicer. Um, Brian Olive, will there be an updated 180 UI? Yes, there will be, um, but the changes are fairly small, so I wouldn't worry too much. Uh, what else? Date picker, I don't think it's changed, is it, for, for Swift UI? I'm not sure. Has it changed? I know it changed over in UI kit, but I'm not sure about Swift UI. Uh, window group is the way of handling, I believe, uh, Windows and Mac OS, or it probably also handles scenes on iPad OS, I expect. Is there pull to refresh functionality now? No, not that I've seen, sadly. You get, I did color pick it earlier. You might have come too late for that, to rewind. It was lightning fast. I was just like, bah, 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 bah. Oh, gosh, I've already been talking for almost an hour, despite the extraordinary speed I'm going at. Metal performance shaders, I have no idea. Did maps already, Brandon, sorry. I have to rewind, get the maps. Anything else, or should we do sprite kit? Ooh, Jeffrey Martin, good question. Where do you initially inject an environment object now? So you'd do it here. So in this case, this is where you'd say, make the thing. You'd say, I want my customer to be inside my uh, app here once, and then inject it at this point. You'd say, I want to have an environment object here or whatever. Um, and that's what you want to do instead, customer. That's where you inject it, or do it you know, in a, property initialize or whatever you want to, down to you. Are there improvements to navbar title and navbar items? There is a change to navbar title, which I saw fly by. I have not investigated it too closely. So let's, let's try it out together, shall we? Something like navigation view. Well, there's one thing on macOS, you can now do a subtitle, um, but not on iOS, so yeah, sucks. Um, you can now, I believe, say, at least on macOS, navigate, hello? The G key is really bad on this keyboard. <laughs> oh, there's no customer anymore, is there? Rats. Let's do hello. Sorry. Hello, world. Um, so I believe there is now a new modifier to do navigation bar. 
the style. Yeah, you can now say should it be inline or or big as a style rather than attach the text of the navigation bar title directly. That's the only major change I've seen for navigation bar stuff. Maybe there's more. If there's more, let me know. Uh, still no image pick controller, says Kilo Loco. He's right, there is still no image pick controller I've seen. Um, you can wrap it yourself, it's fine. Ooh, tabs! I haven't looked at the tabs. Tabs were terrible in iOS 13. Let's see if they're better in iOS 14. It's going to be fun, isn't it? Um, let's do um, a navigation view with a list of one through a thousand. ID self, uh, I in and text row i. So that is a fairly mediocre list of stuff. And it used to be the case, if you had a tab view somewhere, it would misbehave woefully if you had stuff here. So I have multiple content views in here. Let's find out if this is good or bad. Maybe I'll add a tab bar item perhaps, otherwise it'd be hard to read. So oops, down here, tab item, uh, let's do uh, image. Who crikey, system name of what? I don't know, SF symbol, tell me. Give me some symbols. Uh, let's use pencil.slash. Great, that's a great example. Pencil, pencil, dot slash. And then text tab. Okay, let's see how that looks. Let's see if this is better than it was in iOS 13, because it was really bad in iOS 13. And I scroll down and then go to tab and then scroll around a bit and back to the first tab. You know, that is better. That's much better. Okay. So they've got rid of the hideous white flash and actually it retains where you were. Um, you know, it used to be the case that if you had, you know, navigation here somewhere, if you had um, a navigation link, navigation link here, link, and a, ooh, crikey, let's do destination of text detail. Is this improved? Let's find out. It's exciting. We're kind of figuring this out together a little bit here. Um, used to be the case. You would go here, choose an item, change tabs, go back. Yes, it remembered your state. <laughs> it's just like, oh, small mercies of iOS 14. Um, yay, so it remembers your state now, which is a big improvement. <laughs> yeah, so that's tab use. It works great now. Is there an image picker in 50Y? No, there's not. There is not, sadly, still. Um, we wrap it in the 100 Days of Swift UI. Uh, we wrap it there. So we're gonna look at that if you want to. Uh, oh, App Store overlays work now. Um, they don't be much similar to mobile. I can show you how it looks. Um, if we had a, let's do a, um, at state, at state, private var show, uh, apps equals false. There's a new um, modifier called App Store Overlay, which will show recommended apps. You can, you know, upsell your customers to buy more of your apps. Um, and you can say something like button show the H keys on this keyboard is terrible. Show other app. And when it's done, we'll just toggle that show apps boolean and add a modifier to this called app store overlay and this thing and you have got to give it some parameters to work with um the thing to bind to for a start is gonna be show apps and the configuration is slightly trickier you can say sk over overlay that's requires store kit doesn't it let's bring in store kit sk overlay boom dot and you'll see it's app clip configuration ooh, and app configuration ooh. And these things, you can configure them however you want to. You might say, I want to provide in the app identifier of something. Um, I'm not sure what, mind you. Let's do position.bottom. Uh, chat window's in the way again. There we go. I need an app identifier. Let's go and find one. Uh, unwrap app. Boom. Brilliant app. Free Learn Swift in the App Store. Love it. There's my app identifier. And just paste that into there. And this is going to vaguely work uh, in the simulator. You get a little developer preview, basically, to show it kind of works. Boom. That thing slides up saying, yes, go and get this app from the App Store. Um, so you can upsell customers, which is very nice. 
So that is uh, the App Store overlay. Uh, let's do one more thing. I've been talking for almost an hour, and uh, <laughs> I keep getting more and more excited. Oh. Oh. Yeah. WBC is a difficult time for me. I, I get so excited. I need, to, I need to calm down. Sharing it helps, actually. Talking about it helps. I'm slowing down the more I sort of ease into this a little bit because I'm so excited. Uh, Jeremy, it's only if you look at it very carefully. It doesn't say it doesn't say it's real. Oh, hey, Mark, how are you doing? Um, if you look at it, it says very carefully. This is just a developer preview. It's not the real thing. You've got to use a real app to get a real thing on there. Sprite Kit. Brian Olive wants Sprite Kit. Right, I've already made an example for this. I'll show you how it works because it's really, really nice and simple and it looks great out of the box. Right, let's bring in Sprite Kit. I love Sprite Kit. You know, I wrote a whole book on Sprite Kit. It's called Dive into Sprite Kit. It's a choose your own adventure book where you make choices along the way and the projects adapt to your choices. It's really, really cool. Uh, anyway, um, this thing has to have some sort of game scene to show, some sort of SK scene subclass. And there's one I normally use to demonstrate this, which is uh, a game scene inherits from SK scene. Scene. And you gotta do did move two, boom. And we'll make a physics body for the whole world to have SK physics body using edge loop from, uh, edge loop from that one, uh, our frame, boom. And then we'll do touches began when they press the screen. We'll do first guard let touch equals touches dot first else return, pull out the first touch they made. Then find the location of the touch in the screen. Let location, uh, let location equals touch dot location in self. Find where in my scene I was pressed. Then make a box for that using SK sprite node. Uh, and I'll use the color size initializer. Color will use UI color dot red. Yep, UI color. It's not Swift UIE just yet. Uh, dot red. Oh, let's use system red, even nicer. And for size, we'll do a CG size of width. 50, height 50, so it's nice and big on the screen. When I get the position, we'll do box dot position is that location. And box dot physics body equals SK physics body using a rectangle of, there we go, CG size, CG size, uh, width 50, height 50. And add child box. So it adds the box to the uh, main sprite kit area. And now what we've got to do is uh, make that scene somewhere in here. Now this is important, if you do not give it a size, it will render very, very badly. You'll be completely confused, I certainly was. Um, and often when you're doing sprite kit work, you'll have an SKS file defining the size of the scene. Um, I don't have them here because we're free of that now, it's all SwiftUI, it's all programmatic. So we'll do it in code instead, but you've got to give it a size, otherwise it ain't gonna work. So we'll do var scene, uh, scene, Scene is an SK scene. And then uh, let scene equals scene. Come on, Hudson. A game scene. I'm not even better at typing this, you know. <laughs> and then scene dot size, crikey, equals a particular size. You've got to give it a size. Width 300, height 400. And then scene, scene dot scale mode equals dot fill, fill the whole screen and send that back so it can be used by whatever's calling the property. And now, inside our main body, we can say I want a sprite view, which is a new sprite view, a sprite kit plus Swift UI wrapper to put the two together. So we can say I want to load my scene and I want to put it inside a frame of width 300, height 400, like that. Let's give it a try. Hopefully we'll get, yeah, brilliant. <laughs> Sprite gets so much fun. It really is. It doesn't get anywhere near enough love, quite frankly. Uh, yeah, so that's Sprite kit directly inside SwiftUI running at uh, native speed. I would say, this is beta one, uh, it does make my laptop ramp up its fans very, very quickly. So I'm gonna kill the program before it sounds like you've got an airport nearby. <sighs> right, folks, that is one hour of me chatting literally as fast as I possibly can about everything new in SwiftUI for iOS 14. If you have feedback, if you want more videos like this, go ahead and like the video, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, do all those nice YouTube things. 
Um, and if you want, I can hang out a few questions, like a 10 minutes or so. Otherwise, it's back to writing for me. As you can tell, I am totally psyched. <laughs> like, dub dub DC for me is the best day of the year. Um, it's great fun. So I am excited to carry on playing around and writing stuff and experimenting and breaking and fixing and then breaking again. You know, I love it. Um, yeah, I live for this stuff. It's great fun. <laughs> Stephen R, can we do labs with you instead? No. <laughs> Last year, I had my own mini lab, totally by accident. I was sitting there on the floor in the Swift UIQ, and folks just came up and started asking me questions, and I answered them um, because I happened to be available. Um, so <laughs> it was fun, but um, yeah. Do I have Big Sur? No, I do not have Big Sur. I do not. That is a, a fire I am not going near. It looks gorgeous, though. I think it looks absolutely beautiful. I love the new redesign. I want it. I want it very much, but not just yet. Uh, Jeremy, no, I can't. Um, it's not terribly hard to do, but um, I don't want to noodle around and um, screw it up on camera. I'll probably, I'll probably write something up shortly about it so I don't screw it up too much. Oh, someone disliked the video. Thanks for that, folks. <laughs> I'm trying my best, you know, but you can dislike if you want to. It's down to you. Opinion on ARM MacBooks. I can't wait. I've applied to the developer transition kit uh, program. So uh, I'm looking forward to getting one of those ARM Macs through, paying my 500 bucks towards Apple, which I'll keep, and then return the hardware, which seems uh, slightly scammy, but never mind. Um, I'm just keen to see how well it does, but I think it's going to be extremely fast, is a, is a short version. Is Xcode beta running Swift 5.3? Yes, it is. It's good. I love Swift 5.3. So great changes. And this is why all the documentation uses the new multiple training closure syntax, by the way. Two video dislikes. Yeah. Never lied to you folks anyway. <laughs> what do I like most about SwiftUI updates? Huh. I don't really know because there's so many things to think about right now. Honestly, it's a really minor thing. It is SF symbol for Mac OS. Um, was an annoyance. I believe the reason was NS image, the way it works underlying is different from the way it works from UI image internally. So it wasn't easy to make SF symbols on, on, on Mac. And so you could have SF symbols in UI kit, have SF symbols in iOS Swift UI, and cunningly have SF symbols in UI kit and Swift UI in Catalyst on Mac, but not in app kit. Like what? <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah. Uh, fortunately now, uh, Mac OS 11 does support SF symbols, which is great. That's really nice to see. It's a lovely little framework. Ferdinand Rios asks, how are the docs Swift UI? They're good. They're not great. They have a long way to go still, but they are an improvement. And I'm glad to see Apple making headway with documentation. Hopefully, the beginning of a whole brave new world. Calm is Swift UI production ready. I think honestly now the things it's missing aren't enough to hold you back. Like what's it missing? I'm missing missing compositional collection view layouts? That's annoying. Missing attributed strings? Meh, I can do without them. Missing uh, text fields in alerts? Annoying, but I can live without it. So the small things missing like visual effect view, you know, it's not a problem. I can live without those things. So you can do everything you want to at this point in Swift UI. So, uh, Yes, I recommend you uh, go and check them out. Are UI scenes deprecated? No, they're not deprecated. They're still the valid API for UI kit. They're not going anywhere. Um, it's just they've taken it out of the way for Swift UI because it was quite messy. It wasn't very Swift UI ish. Uh, so, a uh, question here about Swift UI and my books. So, Amazingly, well done, SwiftUI team. Amazingly, I have seen not a single piece of breaking code. Everything that worked before worked correctly uh, now, which is great. A very impressive feat to do that. It's all additive that I've seen. No breaking changes yet, which is great. So um, all my books, 100% work. I'm going to add to them. I want to do, you know, uh, the grids. I want to do lazy stuff. I want to do more, but. Right now, they're all totally valid. Kilo, uh, yes, we have alerts in SwiftUI um, since day one. They work great. 
You can just Google that. It's on my site. There's an example code. You can just look through it. It's, it's cool. <laughs> Uh, what does Apple recommend to use in place of attributed strings? Text. Folks don't realize that um, the text view is super flexible. So if you had something like, you know, uh, text hello dot font dot large title dot whatever dot foreground mm, color red, you can then do plus and have text world dot font dot title dot foreground color dot blue and stack them up and that ends up being one view it'll blend the two together to make one uh, a more advanced view see hello world um so yeah the text plus text plus text plus text that's the way they're asking for us to do it it's not as powerful as attributed strings that's that's for sure um uh, i think we kind of miss it at this point um but it's what we've got <laughs> and so it's what we're stuck with and Apple's perspective was that you, you, when you use attributed strings, you're throwing away lots of um, metadata. You know what each thing as an atom was. You lose that in one big attributed string. Of course you do. And so it's nicer having separate texts. That's their uh, pitch in this. Any improvements on split view? Not that I've seen Leonardo. It's it, it's just there as is navigation view. Um, Zach, for me in my brain, it's one minute past ten. I'm on Houston time currently. I'm not sure why I chose Houston. I could have chosen Chicago apparently, but Houston was the first I thought of. <laughs> um, but officially it is four minutes, uh, one minute past four. So yeah, it's uh, late in the UK. How do you manage different color navigation bars with UI? So at this point, I believe you still have to use a UI appearance proxy to do that, which is not ideal. Sawesh, try if let's. Yes, if let works now. If let works great. You can use if let. Hooray. You can say uh, var username is an optional string. Nil by default. And now say I want a group where, let's get rid of some code here. Uh, if let username is username, then text of username is oops is username and that works now which is great image system name of i need to memorize some system names i never remember these things let's do tray first one i saw um so yeah you can, you can now under optionals inside your um function builders and switch thank you very much Helen. switches and if let now work and i think like i said earlier i think it's doug gregor but i wouldn't want to say that too confidently <laughs> because last time I did that he had a go at me saying no it's a team effort so um yeah probably Doug but you never know we'll see ah yes uh, Kilo suggests the dub dub DC community repository go and have a look at this because if you go to uh, github WC you will see this thing here where you can if you're writing anything about dub dub contribute your own links here about Swift UI or about combine or ARK whatever you want to uh, here, if so you want to get your UIKit stuff featured or AppKit or WatchKit, link it there. And I'm going to send folks your way. I'm going to send folks your way to your articles, your content, your videos, your cool code tweets. Um, so go ahead and, and, and link to it in there. It'd be nice. Uh, I'll, I'll paste that into the chat window. And there we go, more or less. Okay. Right, folks, that is now five minutes past 10 Chicago time, apparently. Um, so, uh, thanks everyone for coming. It's been a pleasure having you here. Um, and I might come back tomorrow with some UI kit stuff or more Swift UI stuff. I don't know. I'm going to find out. I'm still exploring this stuff. I'm still figuring it out. I'm having a lot of fun right now. I'm, as you might imagine, extremely excited about all my Swift UI good days to play with. Um, but let me know on Twitter if you like this, if you want to see more like it. Um, and I'll see you next time, I guess. Take care, folks. Bye.